We're here today at Silverstone to visit the Force India factory to find out what happens to a faulty F1 car part and how does an F1 team ensure that it never happens again. I can confirm there's luminous dye and a dark room involved. Let's go find out some more. Before we headed over to the dark and mysterious room where broken F1 car parts are diagnosed, Force India were kind enough to give us a taster of the factory tours that they offer. Now that I've had a look around, been astounded by how light driver seats really are, it's time to head over to the non-destructive testing room where F1 teams analyse car parts after a race weekend. So how does it work? It's broken, excuse the pun, down into four stages. The first stage is what I like to call the dipping and dripping stage. This is where the penetrant, the yellow dye, sinks into any surface breaking that the F1 car part may have. For 20 minutes the part is left to chill out and drip away before heading to the showers for a quick spray down to get rid of any excess dye, which helps to highlight the damaged areas later on. Next we pop the part in the oven for 20 minutes at a not too hot 60 degrees celsius to, you guessed it, dry it off. Finally we move on to the inspection, which is the really cool part we've been building up to this entire time. In true Blue Peter style we're going to take a look at a part that was prepared earlier, but before we turn the normal lights off and switch on the special ultraviolet light, can the naked eye see anything wrong with the part? I put myself to the test. Okay, so I've been given a refueling panel to observe under naked eye to see if I can find the crack or two that's on this refueling panel. Obviously, you know, they go through races, they have things, you know, that batter the parts and you have to make sure that if there is any failures or any cracks coming through, that you find them. But under naked eye, I don't know about you, but I cannot see very much. At least it's not split in two, which is obviously a good thing. There's hardly any, obviously there's like, bits of marks but not actual cracks and this is where the process itself shows where these cracks are under ultraviolet light we're going to find with Jerry where these cracks are. To visually in white light it's very difficult to see any any cracking so as I said before we use ultraviolet to excite the fluorescent penetrant and if we were to just dump the white light and if I just uh, um, lights <laughs> There we go, nice. And then now you can see under the excitation of ultraviolet, you can see that it's uh, very visible, the cracking near the slug here. So, so that and you can see also it, it's captured in threads and the like. Yeah. So, so what we have to do as the technicians is to sentence out what is spurious or, or of no consequence, anything the like of that, and, and whereby, because we know that's just threaded, and whereby on here we can now readily see uh, cracking and we would now speak with our designer, the designer for this particular part, and sentence the component accordingly. Mm. You may be wondering what happens after the fault is found. Well, if it's quite a significant crack such as this, it will firstly be marked as unsafe to be used on the F1 car and then forwarded onto the design team to analyse further and potentially redesign the whole thing. Factors need to be taken into account though, such as whether there was an impact, whether there was a failure in the car which impacted other areas of the car, and so on. In terms of money saving, there aren't any specific figures on how much a department like this saves an F1 team, but if you think that in 2018 Force India were given £27.4 million for finishing fourth, yeah, it saves quite a bit. We are done here at the factory. Thank you so much to Force India for having us today. It is a truly insightful day. If you want to come and have a look at yourself, there are factory tours available, so go and check them out. And that is it. I'm Matt with WTF1, and we'll see you next time.